Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I answered your questions on how I went from this to this. I posted this before and after on Instagram and my Patreon and asked my followers what questions they had on the process I used to get this final figure, which was the Iranias from Loot Studios, who is the sponsor of this video. The questions I got asked the most were, how do I choose my base colors and how do they affect my final miniature? And where and how do I place my highlights? So let's get started. Base coat. What base coat do I apply and how does it inform my final colors? First, one needs to have a vision of what they want their model to look like. When I started, I knew I wanted to do blue armor and red fabric with a purple shadow. The next question was, what techniques will work the best to achieve these goals? I wanted to do a sketch style, so I knew that I was going to be doing mostly layering and glazing. Therefore, I wanted to start with the midtones. Generally, I always start with applying the midtones and then working down into my shadows and up to my highlights. I prefer working this way because usually the majority of my subject is going to be my midtone. However, if the majority of my area would be mostly shadow or mostly highlight, I would then start with that color instead. Starting with my midtones makes me faster because I can apply a highlight layer and then as I wait for it to dry, go in and paint a shadow layer. Second, I am able to apply fewer layers because I will only need to continue to paint the highlights and shadows, which obviously are smaller. Basing with the shadow color and then layering the midtones and highlights means I would need to apply a lot more paint to a model, thereupon giving me a greater and greater likelihood to build up unwanted texture. For the wings, however, I went in with a darker contrast paint. That's because I knew I was going to be able to highlight up with a dry brush. Again, this is why you would want to consider what technique you're going to do before you apply your base coat. For the shield, I had several people ask how I made the decision to make it slightly a different color. If you look very closely, which I didn't think anyone would notice, but you all noticed, um, the armor and the shield don't perfectly match. And that's because I was trying to dry brush the shield and just totally messed it up. If you wanted to make it a different color, I would be very careful in considering what color to add. The shield is quite large, so whatever color I chose would have a large impact on my model. Keeping it blue kept the focus on the face and chest, which is where I wanted my viewers to look. Personally, I think making the shield an entirely different color would only make your model feel more disjointed. I'll talk more about the shield in the next section of this video. Come here, Cardamom! Did you want to come visit? No. No visit? How and where do I apply my highlights and shadows? First, decide where your light source is coming from. My default is an overcast day with the sun directly above my figure. This will give a soft and even light. I just released a video about highlighting and shading for beginners and you can find it here. Before we go on to talking about my thought process about placing the smaller details, I want to talk to you about drawing the eye of your viewer. The brightest area on your model is automatically going to draw the eye. So on this miniature, those areas would be the face, chest, and the upper part of the shield. Generally, the top half of your model is going to be brighter and the lower half of your model is going to be darker. Firstly, this saves time. As since I have chosen where I want the viewer to look, I really only need to worry about the very fine details in those areas. Second, it's important to draw the eye because people tend to get tired of looking at models that are all the same tonal value. The eye just gets tired and the mind gets bored. So instead, give your viewers something to focus on 
by directing them with the brightest areas to the most important parts of the model. So, how and where do I place my highlights and shadows? The magic trick is this. Hold your miniature up to your eye as if your eye is your light source. Any area that you can see should be lit. Areas that are directly parallel to your eye are going to have an intense, bright highlight. Areas that are angled will be slightly darker, but still a highlight. Areas that are perpendicular to your eye are going to be your midtone, and areas that you can't see are going to be in shadow. Once I knew where my highlights went, it was time to start applying them. I started with the armor and applied my first round of layering, covering rather large swashes of the armor. These layers will be in the shape of my element, so I painted a round highlight on each of her breast armor plates. For the leg armor, I am adding highlights to the front in rough painterly strokes. Then I continued to build up the layers, making each layer smaller than the previous layer that I applied. I wasn't too concerned about blending, at least on the armor. And now let's talk about today's sponsor. Loot Studios is a monthly miniature subscription service that releases highly detailed and gorgeous models you can print at home with your 3D printer. The theme this month is a light in the shadows, which consists of several demon enemies, epic heroes, and unique terrain pieces. Personally, I love this set as demons are one of my favorite villains. The files come in 32 and 75 millimeter, which makes them perfect for your table or your display shelf. The models come pre-supported, which is perfect for someone like me who is still very new to 3D printing. This model is the Irnius and she is absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to paint more miniatures from this month's set. Thank you so much Loot for reaching out to me, let's get back to the video. How bright should you go? It depends on the object you are highlighting. Armor, since it is reflective, will go all the way up to a pure white whereas the fabric, on the other hand, will depend on the type of fabric. Silk or taffeta, for example, will go all the way up to white. Cotton, on the other hand, is going to go up to your pure mid-tone and then have a darker shadow. It all depends on the amount of light your object reflects or absorbs. This isn't an NMM video, but I'll go ahead and link several of the videos that I do talk about NMM in my description. For the fabric, I began by painting in a red-purple mixture going beyond the edges of the folds. Then I layered down my shadows deeper and deeper into the folds of the fabric and wet blending it with pure red until the gradations were smooth. For the highlight, I attempted to go over with a straight red, but it really didn't work. Red is very translucent color, so trying to build up a more saturated red over a darker red isn't really going to get you anywhere. If you are interested in learning more about color saturation, you can watch this video here. Eventually, I applied a very light pink to the highlight areas by mixing white with red. White is usually very opaque, so be sure to use straight white and don't attempt this with pink straight from the bottle. Then, once that was dry, I went over it with my intense red. Since the red is so translucent, I didn't need to worry about blending that red into the rest of the fabric. Since I had blended the white fairly well, the red went on perfectly smooth. If you're having trouble with something, just keep experimenting. Not every miniature needs to be perfect and not every element of a miniature needs to be perfect. I then went back into the breastplate to work on those individual shapes within the armor. The armor has faces on it, and these individual curves and bumps will all need their own highlights. And again, these highlights are going to match the shape I'm painting on. For the shield, I attempted to dry brush it, and while it was going okay at first, I very quickly ruined the whole thing. There was too much empty space between the raised elements, which caused me to dip my brush down into those flat areas and apply my paint to the whole thing. I repainted the shield, working with the bright paint I had already applied and then stippling it down into a more darker color towards the bottom of the shield. 
I then went in and tried to do edge highlighting with a round brush on those raised elements and it still wasn't working. When something isn't working out, pause and ask yourself how much time you want to spend on this element. Would you be better off moving on and taking this as a learning experience or is it going to be worth the amount of time for you to go in and fix it? Once I decided that this was indeed important enough for me to go in and fix it, I had a lot smoother of a time with this change of mind. I started with a great purple and added shadow under these elements. Since we couldn't see these undersides when we looked at the miniature from above, these elements would be in shadow. I also used this purple to help differentiate the raised elements from the flat part of the shield. If there is an opportunity to add contrast, take it. From there, I began adding a very light blue to the protruding elements of the shield. Round shapes like the faces of the armor and the face of the miniature have rounded edges and therefore have a rounder and smoother gradation. This is a comparison to the shapes on the shield where the transition will be more sudden and harsh due to the sharp angles seen in the design. Again, pay attention to the tiny details. This is what is going to make your model pop. Places I put my bright white were on the very sharp angles and the pinnacle of each element. Finally, I went in with an even darker color and painted in the shadows. Again, if there's a location to add contrast, do it. Part of what helped increase the contrast in the shield is that I am placing my brights and darks right next to each other. This placement makes the darks look darker and the brights look brighter. To add a few more details, I decided I wanted to paint in the red reflection of the banner in parts of the armor. This totally isn't required, but it was a fun touch to add and I think that the more small details you add to your miniature, the more unique and interesting it becomes. Lining makes a huge difference in helping to separate elements from each other and on your model. It's one of the last steps done in painting and I think it really helps pull your miniature together. See how the chest looks so much more intense now that I added lining and separated the metal from the skin, it makes the miniature look a million times more readable and more interesting to the viewer. For the skin, I didn't want to use a sketch style, but instead I wanted the skin to be very smooth. This would also help differentiate the metal from the skin. These change of textures helps give the impression to your viewer that these are literally different elements and not all just plastic. I applied a highlight to the upper part of the cheeks and then a shadow to the hollows of the cheeks. Then I glazed an in-between color to blend these two colors together. And again, since the face is round, I'm making my transition soft and round as well. And don't forget to add a heavy shadow underneath the chin and jaw. Still, the face was feeling rather flat. I decided to go in and add an extra highlight since the face was one of the elements I wanted to pull my viewer's eye to. When you're getting close to the end of your model, take a moment and look at it and decide where your eyes naturally gravitate to. If your eyes aren't traveling where you want them to, consider making those elements brighter. If you need to, you can always do a quick little cheat take an airbrush and airbrush black ink on the areas that you want to be more in shadow. Since ink is translucent, it's not going to cover up the paint you've already applied, it's just going to darken it down. And as a PS, I'm also adding this rosy hue to her lips, which is going to also match the banner. I prefer to work with a more limited palette to keep the model cohesive. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch me here on YouTube. I hope that this was helpful to you. One of the final questions that I got asked fairly frequently was, who do I have to sell my soul to to get as good as you? Well, you can start by supporting me on Patreon and joining my growing coven on Discord, where you can get personalized feedback from me as well as join my growing community. 
Otherwise, you can follow me on Instagram. Of course, subscribe. If you like what you saw here, comment, like, and share. Anything you can do would be extremely wonderful. Thank you so much again for taking the time to watch this. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. You didn't need to use your claws to get up here. You could have just asked politely and I would have let you on my lap. I know there's not a lot of space, but if you can make it work, then you can stay. There's cat fur on my model. There is a baby boy on my lap. And I'm supposed to just keep working. Like, everything's exactly how it's supposed to be. You're lucky you're so freaking cute, Mochi.